In this video we're going to talk about setting up a Raspberry Pi to run headless. Headless means you have no desktop environment, so when you log in, all you see is a command prompt. So that's good for something like a robot that runs off a battery, where you don't want to burn the battery just to show a desktop you're never going to log into. It's also great if you just want to learn how to use Linux, you know, learn more about the command line, just to get familiar with it. So the first thing you need is a micro SD memory card. This is a 64 gig, it was on Amazon for 10 bucks. And if you're getting a memory card, you wanna look for the U3 marking. That's the performance rating. And U3 is gonna make sure it runs fast when you're installing software. So you'll need a uh, memory card reader, USB memory card reader. Or if you have a SD card slot, you know, you won't need this. Another thing you'll need is an HDMI capable monitor, or you can even use a TV. And you'll need a USB keyboard as well. And this is all just for the first time setup. You won't need the uh, HDMI or the keyboard once we're all set on the headless. So the other thing you'll need is a power adapter. This is an iPad 10 watt power adapter. So any Android adapter should also work fine, but it needs to be at least 10 watts. So this is like a really old one. This one's like 850 milliamps. That's not gonna cut it. It needs to be at least two amps. So for that reason, I recommend you buy one of these kits that comes with everything. It even comes with heat sinks, which are kind of unnecessary, but nice. And this one even has a USB power switch. So the power cord that comes with this is rated for 2.5 amps or 12 watts. But the other end of it is a standard micro USB so that's what you need to power the Pi. And this is basically an Android charging cable. So as long as you can put out enough power, you're gonna be in good shape. But it's very important that you get the correct power adapter because otherwise you'll get these low voltage errors or under voltage errors. Sometimes it'll boot up and all you'll see is a rainbow screen or sometimes even there's like a lightning bolt icon that you see. And all that just means is you have power problems. So let's talk about loading the software onto the SD card. I'm using my USB adapter, so put the card in and plug it into your computer. Open your web browser and navigate to raspberrypi.org. At the top, click on the Downloads link, and we're going to click on Raspbian. For Headless, you want to scroll down and click on the download link for Raspbian Stretch Lite. Here I've already downloaded the file, but if you need to extract it, open it up, right click, copy, and paste it wherever you want. So the next program we need is called Rufus. Navigate to R-U-F-U-S, Rufus, dot I-E, and scroll down to download it. After you've downloaded it, just double click to run. Make sure you have disk or ISO image selected and click the select button. Navigate to the folder where you downloaded and extracted the Raspbian image and make sure you click on the IMG file and not the zip file. If you have the wrong device selected, you will blast it away. So make sure you have the correct one. 64 gigs is correct. And then we can click start. You'll get a prompt that says you overwrite all the data, of course. After you click OK, you will get a second prompt that says, you may or may not, it says you have multiple partitions, that's OK. And now we're writing the image. This usually takes a minute or two. I've sped this up. So once it's completed, you can just click Close, remove the SD card, and now we're ready to plug it into the Pi. Let's take out our Raspberry Pi. We've got the memory card now. And we're going to connect the power, HDMI, and a keyboard. So we'll connect the power last. Uh, first we'll do the SD card. Just goes in this little slot on the bottom. Just like that. It does hang out. Be careful. They're easy to break. Um, let's do HDMI. Let's connect the keyboard. And then the first time it powers up, it does this little expand partition and auto reboot thing. Okay. Red light for power. The green activity is blinking. That means everything's working. 
we're resizing the partition and rebooting. And now it's back, and we're just going to wait a little bit for the whole system to boot up. So now we're ready to log into the Pi. The username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. Okay, now we gotta run sudo raspi config. Just like it says in the message right there, Wi-Fi is disabled because country is not set. Use raspi config to set country. So sudo means run this command as a root user with full privileges, and raspi config is the Raspberry Pi utility created by them to basically set almost everything up. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is make the screen a little bit bigger for you to see. So let's change it to 720 and then reboot. So you hit enter, resolution set. If I go to finish, do I want to reboot? Yes. Great. And now everything's big, much better. Okay, now we will log back in. Once again, pi, raspberry. And once again, sudo raspi dash config. Okay, now what we actually want to do is Go to network options, go to Wi-Fi, go to set your country, U to jump to U. Okay, now we're in the US, and I can enter my SSID information to connect. Mine is called Wi-Fi. That's my password. Tab to jump down to the OK and cancel buttons. Should have mentioned that earlier. So tab, 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 jumps you through all the different, you know, top menu, button, button, back to the menu. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is interfacing options. We want to enable SSH. So for a headless config, you got to get in there after you disconnect your monitor. So SSH is how you do that. Yes, we would like to enable SSH server. Now that that's enabled, we're basically done here. But before we log in to the Pi remotely, we need to figure out the IP address. So if we finish, we can run the command IP space ADDR. This shows on WLAN zero is the wireless. We have an INET address of 10880107. Now that we've connected the Wi-Fi, we have an IP address, we've enabled SSH. Now we can SSH in and do whatever we need to do remotely. We no longer need the monitor and keyboard. We can disconnect them and I'll show you how to connect using PuTTY. First we're going to get the PuTTY program. Google search PuTTY. It should be this first link. Make sure it's this URL. At the top, click on Stable in the download header. At the top is Installers, and underneath is the binary files. I prefer this. You can just click and run it. It's a little easier. Grab the 64-bit one. Yes, we want to keep it, and now we can click it. To launch putty. And yes, we want to run. Okay, here's putty running. Minimize web browser. We can type in the IP address we learned previously to access the Pi. The first time you connect, you'll get this message that says the host key is not cached. Yes, we want to cache it, and this message won't pop up next time. Now we're logging into the Pi. Again, it's Pi Raspberry. And look, we're connected to our headless Pi. This is fantastic. So what's the first thing you want to do when you have a headless Pi? You want to make sure that IP address won't change on you. Currently, the IP address is assigned via DHCP, which means every time you reboot your router or a bunch of devices might come on and off your Wi-Fi network, the IP address could be different next time. You can see how that would be a problem. How do you get into your Pi if you reboot it and it doesn't have the same address? So we can set a static IP address. First thing you need to do is figure out what address you want to set. So my ad address is currently 10880107. So I need to pick something within this sort of range and figure out if it's available for me to use first. So I can use the ping command to do that. And I highlighted this text and clicked on it, and now I can right click and it'll paste. Okay, so what I want to do is pick a different address that's 
a number that's way higher. I like to go in the 200 range. I'm going to do 230, and I'm going to ping it. So I'm going to send this IP address a packet to see if it's online. It says it's not online. So now I can click Control C on my keyboard. And I know that this address is not in use and I can assign this to my Raspberry Pi. So how do I do that? Well, you need to use root privileges, so sudo. You need to use a text editor, nano. We're going to edit the DHCP client daemon configuration file. So this is the file that determines how your computer gets an IP address. We can make this little win window a little bigger here. And you can see here is an example static IP configuration. That's exactly what we want. So we can just highlight this text, click on it to copy it. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. And now I can right click to paste it. These hash symbols mean these are all comments because this is just a sample. So now I want to remove all the comments and make this active. So Interface ETH0, that is incorrect. We want WLAN0. Static IP address is going to be 10.880.230. Static IP6 address, we're not using IPv6. We're just going to delete all that out. After the IP address, you'll see slash 24. And we have static routers and domain name servers. How do we know what to put for the rest of this stuff? Well, we can look at what it was set to before. If you right click on the title bar, we can duplicate this session and log in again. Log in Pi, Raspberry, IP ADDR command again. And now we can see INET address. We're using slash 16. So that's our subnet. They need to match. Make yours match. Type slash 16. Okay, static routers. The command for that is route tac n. So our router is what it shows under gateway. So I can highlight it, click, go over here, delete, right click, paste. Static domain name servers or DNS server. For that, we run cat slash forward slash etc resolve.conf. Now we see our name servers. We have 1111 and 1001. Again, paste. And now we can put a space 1001. So these are specific DNS servers. These are the Cloudflare DNS servers. I like them. They're good. And now we have all the pieces for our static IP. So what I like to do when I change a static IP is actually ping the IP. So if I click the Windows key and type command, we can get a command prompt, make it a little smaller, we can ping. I'm going to ping tac t for continuous. Make another one. So we're going to ping the current IP address. That's all we're doing there. Nothing crazy. But we're going to also ping the new new IP address. Ping 10.80.0.230. T for continuous again. And it's not going to respond because it's, it's not rebooted yet. Okay, so what we're going to do, as I alluded to, is now reboot the Pi. So over here we can uh, see in the corner it says caret x. That means type Control X to exit, save changes, hit yeah, Y for yes. File name, yep, haven't changed that, so hit enter. And now we can do sudo reboot. My connection is disconnected, of course, and now we can watch the pings and wait. So we'll want to reconnect this, and for that we have to right click in the title bar again and go to new session. And we're just going to type in the new IP address. So let's look over here again. Oh, look at that. So the old IP address has stopped responding. The new IP address is now responding. And we're ready to log in.
pie, raspberry. And there we have it. Now we have a headless pie with a static IP address. And we're ready to take on the world. In the next video, we're going to hook up servos and control the servo over a web interface. Very cool. Stay tuned.